As the leading voice of modern psychiatry, the American Psychiatric Association works to ensure humane care and effective treatment for all people with mental illness. APA's vision of a society with available, accessible, quality psychiatric diagnosis and treatment has never been more critical and health disparities have never been in sharper focus. This year's online APA annual meeting theme is finding equity through advances in mind and brain in unsettled times, with an emphasis on increasing knowledge and developing strategies. And we are here to cover it all. This is APA TV. Hello and welcome to APA TV and the first of three daily episodes brought to you from the online 2021 APA annual meeting. We will be featuring some of the best research, education and technology nationally and globally in psychiatry today. Coming up, President Jeffrey Geller discusses the challenges for APA in this unprecedented time. The demand for psychiatric treatment, as well as the presence of anxiety and depression throughout the population went through the roof, and mental health is not immune to disparities in care. Tackling structural racism with the APA task force. Change, if uh, changes to occur, must account for the fellows, those in training, and the disparities faced by Latin and Hispanic communities in mental health. Identifying barriers to access psychiatric treatment among Hispanics is a critical task. But first, with so much great research to explore and with so many exciting events to attend at this online meeting, who better to guide us than Dr. Jacqueline Feldman, the chair of the scientific meeting. She tells us what's unmissable today at APA. Welcome to the 2021 annual meeting for Saturday, May 1st. We have an extraordinary day planned for you. Our plenary session, Our Racial Moment of Truth, is presented by Pulitzer Prize winner Isabel Wilkerson, author of the recent book, Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. There are 45 sessions for you to choose from, 15 each for three sessions today. A few highlights to consider. Dinesh Bugra speaking on structural racism in psychiatry, the past is driving the present. Richard Shelton speaking on ketamine for depression, is the hype holding up, mechanism and evidence. Avram Fishkin and Gonzalo Perez Garcia speaking on equity, ethics, and the future directions of telepsychiatry. Remember to go to the virtual poster sessions and the virtual exhibit hall during your breaks where you can register for the grand prize of a Peloton bike. Have a great day. Now I am delighted to be joined by APA President Dr. Jeffrey Geller to discuss this unprecedented year for APA, its members, and the communities that they serve. Dr. Geller, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here with you today. So you began your term as president of APA last year in the middle of a pandemic. How has COVID impacted existing health inequities and disparities? What COVID did was create a situation that worsened health care inequities and disparities that were already in existence. Racial and ethnic populations that were already lacking access to quality health care and might have had higher rates of illness were then faced with this pandemic. What also happened was the demand for psychiatric treatment, as well as the presence of anxiety and depression throughout the population went through the roof, and mental health is not immune to disparities in care. And we know that you have created the APA Presidential Task Force on Assessment of Psychiatric Bed Needs in the United States. Can you talk a little bit about what that task force is supposed to be doing? I convened this task force because we really don't have a grasp on how much care is available in this country for people with severe mental illness and substance use disorders. I wanted the task force to develop a model that would help states and localities determine the on-the-ground capacity to treat people with serious mental illness and substance use disorders. How accurate number of beds is determined in a community when the beds that exist are scattered throughout a fragmented system? And can you briefly outline the model that you have developed? The task force has drafted a white paper that assesses psychiatric inpatient beds, as well as community services and alternatives that might mitigate the demand for adult and child adolescent inpatient beds. They also developed two models that reflect the complexities of the adult 
and the child adolescent system. To give you a sense of the work we did, we had seven subgroups that took on the historic and contemporary use of psychiatric service beds, the definition of a psychiatric bed, the financing of psychiatric beds, the ideal service system, population variables, children and adolescents, and the creation of the model. So how much progress would you say has already been made by the task force and what are the next steps? Uh, the work of the task force itself is sunsetted, but the content will continue in some form or another and members should keep a watch for opportunities to become directly involved in the next iteration. Wonderful. Well, congratulations on what I'm sure has been a very memorable year. Dr. Jeffrey Geller, thank you so much for your time today. We certainly appreciate it. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. And now a look at the work of King's College London, Department of Psychosis Studies, the largest psychosis clinical research group in the world and a department committed to reducing stigma around mental health. We want to improve clinical care for patients with psychosis through research. Everything we have learned about the onset of psychosis has been thanks to the clinical research work which we have done in this clinic. We can ask patients what they're doing, how they're feeling, to predict what kind of support these individuals might need. We can increase our prognostic certainty by about 40 or 50 percent. We'd like to develop devices or tools to personalize the assessment and treatment of patients with psychosis. Now, the APA Presidential Task Force to address structural racism throughout psychiatry was formed by APA President Dr. Jeffrey Geller in June 2020. We hear from the task force's chair, Dr. Cheryl Wills, about progress made. Structural racism is a combination of public policies, institutional practices, social forces and ideologies, and processes that generate and perpetuate inequities among races. Structural racism's impact go from not getting access to evidence-based treatment, uh, to getting more institutional care and less outpatient care, to making it more likely that they would have an interaction with the police due to untreated mental disorders, and it affects access to care. Just from the diagnosis, from your presentation, from treatment, and from the quality of care that uh, Black patients get, uh, all of them are affected by structural racism. A, a black uh, patient is more likely to be seen as suffering from a psychotic disorder when they are in fact suffering from a mood disorder. There have been studies that show that black and brown children are more likely to be prescribed antipsychotic medication than their similar aged peers who are white. It's been a national movement to look at structural racism um, in every organization, in every aspect of society. Dr. Jeff Geller appointed this task force to look at what we can do to make sure that we do not have structural racism within the APA now and especially looking forward to the future. The job includes providing education and resources about APA and psychiatry's history regarding structural racism, looking at the current impact of structural racism on mental health of our colleagues and our patients and their families, looking at achievable and actionable recommendations for change, and providing reports to the Board of Trustees. Recommendations have been passed to the board and largely approved, and it will set forth a series of priorities that we'll be working on for years to come. Change, if uh, change is to occur, must account for the fellows, those in training. So it was important to have a separate work group for fellows. Ethics fellows develop a toolkit that answers ethical dilemmas 
that confront residents and fellows in their training. Looking at how we train psychiatrists to be more sensitive to social determinants of health allows us to make a better informed diagnosis and to a more informed treatment plan. It's an ongoing issue and we need to continue to increase awareness of the importance to everyone about inclusiveness and diversity and equity in all of our activities. People can just start off by looking at the Structural Racism Task Force website. There are wonderful a series of books to educate yourself and looking within their own district branches or their areas to say, what kind of projects would we like to do? We've got podcasts out there. Uh, there are videos out there. So whatever they're interested in, uh, take a piece of that and, and get started. There will be a presidential town hall on structural racism to inform all of our members about the wonderful work that the task force has done and that we plan to continue doing within the American Psychiatric Association. This is the first step. It's a, a, a fantastic first step, but it's only a first step and there's more work to be done. Next up, People USA provides people living with mental health or addiction issues with the high quality, effective peer services and behavioral health care. This nonprofit is 100% made up of people with their own lived experience with mental health or addiction issues. People USA is what's known as a peer run organization. The mission of People is to educate, empower, and support people that are dealing with mental health and substance use issues, but to offer them the education that can help them support a better quality of life for themselves. A peer run nonprofit means that all of our staff have lived experience, whether that's substance abuse, mental health, or trauma. So they have an in depth understanding of what the person we're serving is going through. I think the future of People USA is to continue the work we're doing, to, to change the paradigm, to work with traditional uh, models of care in behavioral health. So I look at us as disruptive innovators in working in a system that has been very traditional and fixed on illness and move it towards more of a system that's focused on wellness. There is much more to come from the 2021 APA meeting and APA TV is bringing you all the latest news and highlights from the meeting and from innovations in mental health care across the globe. Here's how to watch. On the front page of the virtual meeting platform, on a dedicated page at the APA website, and on our YouTube channel and Twitter. Now, Maine Behavioral Healthcare serves the oldest and most rural state in the nation. Let's take a look at how they do it. We have a great breadth and depth of service that we provide within Maine. We have a huge geographic footprint. We also have a tremendous breadth of services across the lifespan from inpatient to residential to developmental disabilities and autism care, as well as integrative health with primary care. A flagship hospital, which is Maine Medical Center, which is our level one trauma center, community mental health centers, critical access hospitals, residential treatment facilities, in-home services. We also have a psychiatric residency program. We have a research institute, and we have an innovation and simulation center. We increased our telehealth use by 900% this past year in the pandemic, and we're looking at models to be able to perpetuate the use of telehealth. So we have a lot of opportunities through education, through workforce development, to be able to expand and grow, and we're very excited for Maine Health. Improving access to mental health care is a central part of APA's work. Next up is a look at addressing barriers to access for Latinx and Hispanic communities. 
Hello, my name is Dr. Hector, Dr. Colón Rivera. I'm the president for the Hispanic Caucus on the APA, and I want you to invite you guys to the Latinx Hispanic Communities and Mental Health, identifying barriers to access and potential solutions during unsaid times. Our presenters include uh, Dr. Mauricio Tohen from the University of New Mexico. He will be talking about the epidemiology risk factor clinical characteristic of Latinx Hispanic patients for psychotic episodes. Then, Bernardo N.J., University of, from the University of California, San Diego, will talk about the emotional impact of the pandemic in Mexico and how the, our communities manage that stress. Dr. Ruby Castilla Fuentes from Town Point Drexel University will talk about some of her research on artificial intelligence and access to depression treatment in Hispanic and Latinx communities during and after the pandemic. I'm very excited about this group of presenters. The health of a population is influenced by both its social and economic circumstances and the healthcare services they receive. Latinx and Hispanic face a different barriers to receiving mental health care services. Some of these barriers result from the low socioeconomic status, others are due to specific cultural characteristics, degrees of acculturation, language, and immigration status. Identifying barriers to access to psychiatric treatment among Hispanics is a critical task. I want to see you guys in this presentation. You will learn to assess, treat, and identify these barriers so you can help your patients. Thank you. Next, to Barcelona, Spain, where startup COA Health focuses on innovations in digital well-being and therapeutic solutions that combine the latest clinical research and breakthrough technologies to deliver mental health support. COA Health is a company which is offering digital health solutions. And our vision is mental well-being for everyone. We want to be able to build solutions that will really be able to, to help people uh, based on their need uh, in countries right around the world. So Co is really focused on a digital first solution. So the apps themselves are the therapy, but with a human in the background to cover the spectrum from prevention to early symptom management to clinical treatments, including severe mental illness across a range of common mental disorders. Our approach to the evidence base, which involves working with the best key opinion leaders around the world, our designers uh, are user-centered. We work with people with depression to build tools for people with depression, likewise anxiety, OCD, body dysmorphic disorder, and so on. And to use both symptom tracking and also an understanding of the emotional state of the individual to really get the right tool to the right person at the right time. That is it for now from the online 2021 APA meeting, but there are more episodes to come. Join us tomorrow to hear about the devastating impact of COVID-19 on mental health with APA CEO and medical director, Saul Levin. COVID-19 has really driven home the seriousness of the physician and psychiatry shortage within the United States. Asian American mental health is in focus We've all been challenged to cope during the pandemic, and unfortunately, one of the least constructive ways of coping is by blaming, by scapegoating others. And the impact of trauma. Interpersonal violence, motor vehicle accidents, and disasters can have far-reaching psychological and behavioral effects. Until then, goodbye.